Mary Kellogg had been frozen for centuries. The year was 5077. After her first adventure to the ancient Boston Library, Mary had learned lots, including the whereabouts of her long-lost descendants. She had to find them by any means necessary. She followed the signs to the exit of the library's balcony, where she was met with a sight of New Boston. The buildings were low and crumbling, shiny metal cars were rusting, and the sky was dimly lit with towers and acropolises. She heard a, a roar and turned around. A monstrous creature was charging at her. It had metal claws, glowing eyes, and wires sticking out of its flesh. It was a cyborg death claw being one of the horrors of the new world. She jumped and ran towards the nearest shelter, an ancient police station. She slammed the door behind her but it was too late. The beast had lunged at her, but before she could, it could tear her apart, she fell backwards and shot the beast simultaneously hearing a crackle of energy ringing out. A man in a leather jacket and a fedora stepped out of the shadows. He had a laser pistol in his hand and a badge on his chest. He was a detective, an ancient synth. Freeze, lady, he said. You're under arrest for time espionage. He pointed at her photo. You're one of them, aren't you? A time travel from the past. You've been messing with the timeline. You're working with those damn merfolk, aren't you? The ones who built that scab island off the coast. The one who, ones who were trying to take over. She shook her head dazed from her death claw injuries. She adjusted her jacket. She had just woken up from a nightmare only to find herself in another one. She was a woman out of time, desperately seeking something. She needed to find her descendants. Mary hired the detective to help her find her descendants. She had shown him a map of the old world from the library. An ancient mysterious land called the village was marked on it. She knew of this place from the old stories, a land of ice and snow called Canada in the ancient tongue. He believed her and took the job. He needed the caps and was curious about her. She was a mystery, a paradox, but not the first woman out of time he had met. They tried to charter a boat to reach Far Harbor, a jump off point to Canada, but they were told that the seas were too dangerous. The merfolk had been raiding all of the ships, sinking them or capturing them. They had built an army and were preparing for invasion. They didn't give up. They found a raider gang that had a plan to steal a ship from the merfolk. They joined them, hoping to hitch a ride. They boarded the ship and ar armed and ready. They set sail, heading for the unknown. They sailed for days, avoiding the merfolk patrols. They encountered a ship of refugees fleeing from Far Harbor. They were the children of Adam, Adam a cult that worshipped radiation. They called their ship Old Blowy, a hybrid submarine with old nuclear warheads dangling from its masts. They agreed to help the raiders attack the Merfolk Island. They had said that the island was an abomination, a blasphemy against Adam. They wanted to cleanse it with fire. They reached the island where the Merfolk built a city of coral and metal. They launched their assault, firing their guns and explosives. Or merfolk fought back using their spears and alien blasters. A long and bloody battle ensued with many casualties on both sides. Just as things were looking bad, the masts of Old Blowy collapsed. The nuclear warheads fell into the water, creating a massive explosion. The island was nuked, killing everyone on it. Mary and the synth detective managed to escape on a small submersible. After being severely injured by a Myrlin Queen, they watched the mushroom cloud rise in the horizon. They got lucky. Valentine, the synth detective, and Mary had been traveling along the coast for days, hoping to reach the village before winter. Their small submersible could dive under the water when needed, but they preferred to stay on the surface to enjoy the view. One day, they saw a large island in the distance. Valentine recognized it as Far Harbor, a place he had once visited. He told Mary the story of how he helped the people there fight against the children of Adam, the synth refuge, and the fog. He told her about Sean, who was the leader of the Institute, and created many clones of himself and her father, Conrad. She, he said that some of the clones had escaped and settled in Canada, and that they looked like her descendants. Mary was fascinated by the story, but she also felt a bit uneasy. She wondered if she would meet any of Conrad's clones in Canada, and how would they react to her. She also wondered what else waited for them in the frozen world. They decided not to stop at Far Harbor, as, it, as they saw that the island was overrun by merfolk and sea mutants. They looked like a mix between fish, human, and something else. They had scales and fins and claws and teeth. 
They swam in the water, crawled on the land, and attacked anything that moved. Valentine and Mary quickly turned their submersible around and headed away from the island. They hoped to find a safe, safer route to Canada, but they knew they were, the dangers were not over. Valentine warned Mary about another mutant species that had involved in the cold regions, the frost lakes. They were mole miners who had been exposed to the FEV virus and had become even more monstrous. They had thick fur, ice spikes, and frost breath. They lived in the caves and tunnels and came out at night to hunt. Mary shivered at the thought of encountering the frostlings. She wished they could find a place where they could live in peace without the fear of mutants, raiders, or war. She held Valentine's hand and thanked him for helping her. Valentine smiled and said that he was glad to have her as his partner. He said that they would make it to Canada and that they would find what she was looking for. They continued their journey hoping for the best. They finally reached the mouth of the St. Lawrence River and saw the first signs of civilization. They saw lights and buildings and boats. They also saw a large sign that said, Welcome to the village. They felt a foreboding ominous feeling like being watched by a thousand eyes. They entered the river and headed towards ancient Upper Canada. They had to stop for supplies around some old ruins of civilization. The snow-covered city was frozen in time, abandoned long ago. Valentine and Mary cautiously crept slowly toward through the city, reaching the old market. They quickly grabbed some canned food and some frozen water bottles, as much as they could carry. Suddenly the door burst open and a giant wolf nose poked through the door. A pack of dire wolves circled outside. Stay tuned for part two. The channel is growing. Don't forget to like and subscribe.